Hey guys, what's up? Tyler here, uh, seventh video. Now, I personal message everyone asking for questions, and a lot of people respond. I got a couple of nice ones. Um, now I'm just going to start off answering the questions pretty much. Uh, Twin States Bass Club asked me what's the best lure to use during the late fall slash winter. He asked me really for winter, but I'm not, I'm from the northern states, you know, so I don't really do a whole lot of winter fishing except ice fishing, and I don't really do that either, but. Now uh, the best bait I think for late fall after the big feeding frenzy is football, big football head jig with a pork trailer. This is a beaver trailer, but natural color, um, you know, blacks, black and blues, reds, and big dark browns are my favorite. Now uh, pork is going to let it sit really natural presentation. That's what you want in this type of technique. Uh, you're going to want to fish the deep vertical breaks, fishing it really slow, just dragging it on the bottom and dead sticking it. Um, uh, those fish in the big jig, three quarter rounds here. Those fish want a bigger meal. They don't want to be chasing little baits. So finesse fishing really isn't this time of year is not really that good. Um, you know, they want a big bait because they don't want to eat too much. So they don't want to be chasing little bait, you know, little tiny minnows instead of they want one big high protein type of meal. So football head jig is my favorite uh, lure in the winter. <laughs> winter. <laughs> um, but the elite fisherman uh, Mike asked me my what gear do I use now I don't know if you wanted me to do like a tackle box review but you know this is my tackle box I don't know how how often I'm gonna be or how it probably take me too long to review that whole thing in one video so I'm just gonna quickly state that um, pretty much from the, the tab my rods and reels I use pretty much quantum products uh, energy PT bay casting reels um, and I rarely use spinning rods uh, I have two of them, but I really don't, the two main ones, that I don't really use too often. I just have them there just as a backup. If I need a, you know, lighter line finesse type of thing, six pound line, eight pound line. Um, don't really finesse fish that much, but, you know, if conditions get tough, I might call for it. So I'll opt for it sometimes, but really, pretty much use uh, seven to one gear ratio bait casting reels, uh, five to one for deep crankbait fishing. And that's basically it. Uh, fluorocarbon for all of them except for top water and and my frog fishing so that's it for my gear uh, trap or die 87 Joe wanted to know like about the bleeding bait type of lures or the red hooks uh, he just wanted to know what the deal was with that now you know it's basically just a marketing thing uh, you know bleeding bait you know, those fish see red, they think the bait's de dying, they'll go attack it. Well, see, the bass don't have that type of mental capacity to, to think that. So, they're not they're not keen on this because it's because it looks like blood. That's just a, a marketing thing. They're keen on it because they can see red. Really, that's the, the first color that they can see, the best color that they can see. So, it's not a bleeding bait. It's just a it's just another way to integrate red into your, into your uh, lure. It's just a marketing thing for the most part. So that's that's that myth. Um, sweetness seventy two uh, R A W R. Don't really know what the, that's how you pronounce it or whatever. But Cameron wanted to know about tubes because he doesn't fish them too often or he rarely fishes them. He said um, can't really cover it in this short amount of time. I'll have to do another video on tubes. But you know you fish them basically like a jig in Texas rig them punch heavy cover. You can fish them on a jig head fish open water. Uh, drop shot little ones, so it's really it's hard to explain them in one quick video. So I'll, I'll do my next video on tubes. How about um, now? Sports talk and radio and sports talk and reports asked me two questions. What's my favorite style of fishing? Is first one and and that'd be power fishing, uh, fishing really fast, fishing really efficiently. Try and get my bait in front of as many fish as possible. Um, so heavier line, I like the fish. Uh, going for reaction strikes. I'm not fishing for hunger strikes. I'm not slowly dragging stuff or finesse fishing. You know, drop shots is not really a thing that I use all that often, but when I calls for it, I do, but for the most part, power fishing. Don't like to slow down at all. I, the trolling motor is constantly on five, so so that's my favorite style of fishing. I use a wide variety of baits. It's, it's just the way you fish the baits, basically, is what it is. It's your, you're just looking for reaction strikes. Now, and in contrast to that, I, my favorite fishing lure, they asked me, and that would be a big Texas rig worm, and my favorite lure is the Zoom G-Tail. Uh, in this color, it's black and 
with a big bright blue tail. Now this style of bait was was a old time type of fishing lure or type of worm um, with the big tail and the longer body. Now I don't know why, but a whole lot of people don't fish this. Um, I haven't really seen it ever anybody else fishing it. No, it it's just one of my go-to baits. I, I use it when I need a fish. Um, you know, use a five-ounce hook, uh, quarter-ounce weight. The key to the light weight is because when you have when and I and don't peg I don't peg the sinker. Now, when the bait when the sinker's falling down like this, this bait will follow on a slack line, and this this tail is gonna just helicopter so nicely and fall real slowly, and those bass just smack it just because it looks like a dying bait fish actually so well. Um, but that's my favorite go-to lure. Now, Wisconsin Bass Whisperer, Casey asked me to do like a classic, 2010 classic preview on Lay Lake in Birmingham. Uh, like the lake background is it's gonna, it's a shallow, uh, shallow lake. It's not really that much deeper than 10 feet all the way around pretty much. Uh, or people are gonna be staying in that range under 10 feet for the most part. It's gonna be clearer type of water, uh, and it's gonna have a lot of hydrilla mats and a lot of weeds everywhere. So, and it's on a Coosa River system, it's an uh, impounded lake. So, you know, the main techniques I think are going to play out is, is one is a lipless crankbait, like uh, this red I had, um, in this color particularly, uh, like a brown back type of, just something that's pretty natural looking. Uh, now, when you're fishing this, it's going to be, this is going to be when it's uh, low light, it's going to be, you know, cloudy out and it's going to be a little bit more chopping alarm, it's going to be a little heavier wind. Um, those fish won't be, they're going to be roaming around the cover as far as, as, as opposed to being in the cover. They're going to be looking for baits, they're going to be a little bit easier to catch because, you know, baits going to, uh, you know, they're not going to be able to see the bait as well because all the chop and the cloudy, uh, how it's cloudy out. So, and, uh, so that's going to be one technique when it's cloudy out. And now when it's sunny out, those fish are going to pack into and they're going to group up in the hydrilla man. So flip and bite is going to be big. Now, Duckett, when he won in 07, he used uh, rattle trap for the most part and just flung it around in eight to nine foot of water and ripped it through the weeds and caught a lot of fish off of that when it was cloudy out. But then for his two kickers, he used a chigger craw, flipping it into the mats with a heavy tungsten weight. Now that's going to be another main, that, I think it's going to be one on a flipping bite rather than, you know, the fast moving baits like the lipless crankbaits. Like Skeet Reese actually used that and took second by just targeting spotted bass and Duckett targeted spots and he caught a bunch of large ones too, flipping the mats too. So I think the flipping bite's going to be the way to go um, based on that time of year. It's going to be pre-spawn. So my three predictions are going to be one's Terry Scroggins. He just big time flipping guy. He's from Toho, Lake Toho. He's big time. Uh, he's just a he finished ninth, I think, in 07. So he, he's one of my predictions this year. Uh, next guy, Tommy Biffle, the shallow water god. Um, I think he took out dethroned Denny Brower. I think he's the top now. So Tommy Biffle, I think you should watch out for him. And also, I, I want to see this. I'm not sure if this is really. Well, and let me just throw this name out there. Kevin Van Dam, I'm not going to include because he's just a. He's, gonna, he's always in the contention, you know. So. Kevin Van Dam I'm not going to include, even though he's probably probably the favorite going in. doesn't really matter. But Gary Klein also, I want to see win. He hasn't won a Classic yet. And hopefully he gets that. Um, and my dark horse prediction is Daryl Swindle. From, he's from Alabama. He's familiar with Lay Lake. And he doesn't have a, a lead series of victory yet. So hopefully we see G-Man win. Um, but I don't know. There's just a few guys I think are going to be the favorites to go in. So... Oh, well, I'm going to get going. Uh, thanks a lot for the questions and stuff. Uh, peace out, guys.